Dear students, welcome to EPG Patshala. Today in this module, we will discuss about the structure and the operation of a solid waste landfill. In our previous module, we discussed about what is waste disposal, what are the different waste disposal options which are available and what is controlled, what is open dumping and the problems associated with open dumping. We also discussed about control dumping. We defined landfill and the different components of a landfill. Now in this module, we will discuss about the, we will discuss in detail about the structure of a landfill. Now landfilling is a controlled or safe option. It is an engineered structure where it is an engineered structure which is used for containing the waste with a proper barrier system or a protection system so that it does not affect the environment or it does not cause any health hazards. Now for constructing a landfill in a previous module we discussed about what are the different criteria we have to look into for selecting a site for landfill. So with that we also should know how a landfill should be constructed. Now components of a landfill there are three major components. One is your liner system, second one is your waste emplacement cell and the third one is your cover or it is also called as a capping system. Now in a liner system, now these are provided for protecting the environment to prevent the leachate from entering into the soil and the ground and surface water. Now the lining system is of three major types. One is your single liner system, your composite liner system and double liner system. Depending upon the nature of waste that is being dumped or contained in the engineered structure, the type of liner system are chosen. This liner system consists of a natural material as well as a synthetic material. Natural material it can be a clay and uh, it can be a clay and if for a synthetic material it can be any polymer. It, it can be a high density polymer or it can be a low density polymer. Now the liner system are generally used at the bottom as well as on the sides. Now after the liner system are placed then the waste are loaded or placed in three different pattern. One is your area method, the other one is your cell method and the third one is your layer by layer, by layer method. Now we will discuss about all these things in detail in the coming slides. Then after the waste is being placed in these cell, then final once after the waste is being placed in these cell and the capacity of the landfill is complete, then you have to close the landfill with a capping system. Now how the capping system is also again important because it will protect the waste from the natural conditions like rainfall, wind, other uh, rodents, insects, etc. So that this also has to be designed in a proper way. Now after looking into all these things, we will also discuss about the various phases by which the waste is getting degraded in the landfill. If you see the waste degradation occurs in different phases like if initially it is just the aerobic degradation for few days or you can say for 5 to 7 days it is just aerobic degradation. After that slowly the anaerobic degradation takes place. After that slowly the an anaerobic degradation overshadows the aerobic degradation. Then we will look into the different phases like in anaerobic degradation there are four phases of degradation like hydrolysis, acetogenesis, acidogenesis and methanogenesis. We will see at each phase how the waste behaves, what are the different degradation pattern it follows. We will also see how or what are the different gases which are generated. With After this we will also discuss about the various factors which are going to influence your waste degradation within the landfill. Now with this introduction, now let us look into the different learning objectives of this module. The learning objectives include, 
first we will define what is a landfill, we will understand the different components of a landfill, we will also look into the different types of lining material and the liner system which are used in a landfill, we will discuss about the types of waste emplacement within the landfill, then we will understand the structure of a landfill capping or cover material which is used at the end or the final layer of landfill. Now then we will also discuss about the various process of waste degradation within the landfill and finally we will discuss about the various factors influencing the waste degradation in a landfill. Now the control dumping it is also called as landfilling, it is one of the largest route of disposal. A landfill is an engineered structure for disposal or containment of solid waste. It is a safe method of waste disposal because it will avoid contamination to the environment as well as it will prevent health hazards in human beings. They are landfills are designed and operated in such a way that it meets the acceptable standards in terms of air quality, in terms of water quality and in terms of other parameters. As I told you earlier, they are designed in a way to protect the environment and health of a people. Landfills are not homogeneous and they are usually divided into a number of cells with a discrete volume. These cells are imaginary and it will store a specific volume of waste and they are kept isolated that is each cell is kept or separated from the other by means of a suitable barrier. So, landfills are not homogeneous and are usually made up of cells in which a discrete volume of waste is kept isolated from adjacent waste cells by a suitable barrier. This particular option that is landfill option will be suitable if the following conditions are satisfying. One, the land availability at an affordable price. Second, adequate workforce and technical resources. For example, we all know in today's time the land cost is very high. We cannot afford to spend so much of money in a large area. So, you have to consider the land price as an important parameter. Then you also need an adequate workforce since, since, since it is an engineered structure, it requires a lot of layering, lining and all those things. So you need adequate workforce and technical resources. It is not a simple structure like um, just you take the waste and then dump it off in an op open area. This needs a lot of skilled technical workers who can design the liners, who can design how to place the cell in a, how to place the waste in a cell and also they will decide about the final cover. In addition to this, the technical resource will also keep monitoring the landfill even after its closure. The monitoring will take place for up to 5 to 10 years. Now coming to the types of landfill, there are three types of landfill, one for the hazardous waste which is called as a secured landfill, the other one is for a non-hazardous waste or the municipal waste which is called as a sanitary landfill and the third one is the waste landfill for inert waste material. Now inert waste material uh, consists of the bricks, cement, stone, glass, etc. They do not degrade and hence you do not need a um, a high level of protection for uh, landfills where the inert waste are to be dumped. Among these three, the secured landfills require more protection because the leachate or the emissions which are released from these landfills are very toxic and harmful. It will affect or contaminate the environment and it will affect the individual. So you have to give a lot of uh, importance and take a lot of precautions while you design a secured landfill. The components of a landfill, if you see there are three major components of a landfill. One is your liner system which is laid at the bottom and on the sides of a landfill. And second one is your waste emplacement cell where after lining how or what is the method you are choosing for layering or laying the waste in this particular landfill area. 
after you place the uh, uh, waste in these cells or by any other method, once the uh, capacity of the landfill is over, then you have to give a final cover which leads to the closure of the landfill. This is the third component called as the landfill cover or landfill capping. Now this image shows how a landfill will actually look like. You can see uh, the layering or the lining material which is provided here. The lining material includes compacted clay, gravel, you also have a leachate collection system. Even synthetic fabric or polymers are used as part of a uh, liner system and it is used for lining so that the soil and the groundwater is protected uh, from the pollution which is caused by the leachate released from the solid waste. You can also see the waste is emplaced in the form of cell. You can uh, see this imaginary cells where the waste is being loaded and they fo follow a sequence by which the waste is being dumped. You can see old cells and also new cells on the other side where the waste uh, emplacement is progressing. You can also find out the leachate pumping uh, systems where the leachate which is produced will be collected through, le through these leachate collection systems. and it will be pumped out and the leachate which is uh, pumped out will be taken up to a treatment plant for further treatment. In addition to all these things, you also have a groundwater monitoring control system where this will help us to find out if there is any leakage in the liner system. The groundwater monitoring system, it is usually, um, it will be in operation after the closure of the landfill. Along with the ground, groundwater monitoring system, we also have landfill gas monitoring system. Uh, in a previous module, I also told you like before selecting a site for landfill, you have to assess its water and air quality. This will help you in finding out if the landfill is causing any terms of pollution. So, if you compare the water quality or the air quality index before and after the landfill uh, construction or landfill usage, then you can identify what is the level of pollution that the landfill is causing. Now, let us enter into the landfill design and the various engineering aspects which are involved in uh, designing a landfill. Now, the purpose, the main purpose of designing a landfill is to contain the waste and protect the environment. This can be done by using a geological barrier and a liner system which can be laid at the base, at the sides or and on top which is termed as cap of the landfill system. The type and requirement of a barrier system is always dependent on the type of waste that is to be deposited in a landfill site. That is it can vary according to the nature of waste that is for hazardous waste you have to have a more secure liner system when compared to a municipal waste and the inert, inert waste does not require much uh, efficient liner system because they are non biodegradable uh, it is not going to uh, contaminate or affect the environment in a uh, to a larger extent. The barrier system should prevent the pollution of soil, groundwater as well as surface water and it should also ensure efficient collection of leachate. So, when these two criteria, you have to keep it in mind when you select the barrier system. Now, a geological barrier is decided or determined based on the geological and hydrogeological conditions below the landfill and in the surrounding vicinity. This will influence, for example, the place where your landfill is located is having uh, soil which is having a high porosity, then you have to have a liner material which is more secure. So, that the leachate does not enter into the soil because once there is uh, a leakage or if this um, or if the leachate enters into the soil, it the this sandy soil will be more porous and it will easily uh, percolate into the soil and it will reach the groundwater. So, that you have to keep it in mind. The geological and hydrogeological conditions are very, very important when you select a geological barrier. Now, hydrogeological condition 
like the uh, ground water table, the uh, hydrological isolation, the distance between the water body. So, these factors are uh, considered under hydrogeological conditions. The characteristics of a geological barrier may be achieved by use of a natural or a synthetic material. That means, the geological barrier can be determined or it is you can design the geological behavior according to the nature of waste. So, here this can be achieved by using natural and synthetic material. Natural materials can be clay or uh, other uh, uh, bentonite clay soil and synthetic materials are polymers like uh, PVC, uh, high density polyethylene, low, low density uh, polyethylene etcetera. Now, let us look into the first component of the landfill, first one which is the liner system. Now, a landfill liner is a barrier laid at the bottom and at the sides of the landfill so that the environment is protected against the contaminants and its entry into the soil and groundwater. The landfill liner system is designed to control the accumulation and migration of landfill gas. It is again made up of both natural as well as artificial or synthetic material. A liner system is a combination of many layers. You can find a natural liner which can be a clay, you can have a synthetic liner which can be again a polymer which can be PVC, high density polymer or low density uh, polyethylene etcetera. Then you will have a leachate collection system and a geofabric for preventing the solid material entry into the leachate collection tube. So, all these things put together will form a liner system. Individually it is called as a liner material and when all these different liners and the leachate collection system are all put together they are called as a liner system. The liner materials should provide sufficient permeability and thickness so that it can be used in a landfill. The important um, criteria which you have to consider while selecting a liner material, material is its permeability also called as hydraulic conductivity. The permeability as you all know permeability means it will allow more fluid to pass through. Higher the permeability then you should avoid such materials because it will allow water to pass through or drain uh, through it. So, always you have to select materials with lower permeability. So, the permeability or hydraulic conductivity of a material has to be calculated or determined before it is being used in a liner system. Now, the hydraulic conductivity is calculated as per Darcy's law which describes the flow of a liquid through a porous material or the ease with which the leachate flows through this liner material is called as hydraulic conductivity. The hydraulic conductivity of few of the materials are list, listed below in the table. Now, you can see uh, hydraulic conductivity or permeability it is expressed as meter per second. Now, for a well graded sand gravel mixture the permeability will be around 2 into 10 to the power of 4. For poorly graded clean sand gravel sand it will be 5 into 10 to the power of minus 4. Silty sand will have 5 into 10 to the power of minus 5. Likewise, the compacted clay will have 1 into 10 to the power of minus 8 to 10 to the power of minus 10 it will be in that range. The bentonite enhanced soil will be having a permeability of 5 into 10 to the power of minus 5. The geosynthetic clay liner these are all polymer the geosynthetic clay liner is a combination of a natural and a synthetic polymer. So, this will have a permeability in the range of 1 into 10 to the power of minus 10 to 10 to the power of minus 12. Geotextile, geonet these are synthetic liners and they have uh, uh, permeability in the range of 1 into 10 to the power of minus 4 to minus 5 and 1 into 10 to the power of minus 1 respectively. Now, from this table you can see the lowest permeability is for the geosynthetic clay liner that is 1 into 10 to the power of minus 10 and uh, 10 to the power of minus 12. So, they are they can be popularly used. So, accordingly we have to decide what is the level of hydraulic conductivity that you have to give for different landfills. 
for a hazardous waste landfill or a secured landfill the hydraulic conductivity of less than or equal to 1 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meter per second or and material thickness in the range of uh, greater than or equal to 5 meter can be used for a secured landfill. On the other hand for a sanitary landfill where your non hazardous wastes are loaded and hydraulic conductivity of less than or equal to 1 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meter per second will be sufficient and the thickness of the liner material can be greater than or equal to 1 meter. Similarly, for the inert waste landfill sites and hydraulic conductivity of less than or equal to 1 into 10 to the power of minus 7 meter per second, it is sufficient and the liner material of thickness greater than 1 meter will do for the inert waste material. Among this values also if you see the hazardous waste will have the lowest hydraulic conductivity when uh, compared to the non hazardous waste and inert waste will be little higher. So, now let us look into the landfill liner materials, what are the different liner materials uh, that are used and on what basis you will select the liner materials all these things we will see in the uh, upcoming slides. There are a large variety of natural and synthetic mineral materials and synthetic polymer materials which are used in the construction of a hazardous, non-hazardous and inert waste landfill sites. Now, how do you choose a liner system? The choice of liner system uh, or the barrier liner system will depend on the following uh, criteria. One, your type of waste. For example, if you are uh, talking about the hazardous waste, then you have to choose a material accordingly because it should be more secured. And if you are talking about the inert waste, it can be very minimum uh, liner material having even uh, the low, uh, low uh, having the highest permeability can be used. Then the second criteria which you have to look into is the geological and hydrogeological conditions in the surrounding environment. This I have already uh, explained you have to look into the geology, what is the nature of soil, uh, what is its porosity, what is its bulk density, then you have to look into the water table level, then uh, what is the percolation rate or infiltration rate. So, all these things you have to consider before you choose a liner material. The next important criteria is the property of the derived leachate. Now, how toxic is your leachate? Sometimes you see these leachate are toxic as well as corrosive. These are hazardous material, uh, hazardous liquid which is generated from hazardous material. They will possess a property like uh, crit, corrosivity, reactivity, ignitability and toxicity. So, some of the materials are corrosive which can corrode the liner material and it will destroy or puncture or create holes on these liner material so that the leachate can be released off. So, the property of the leachate which is generated needs to be uh, determined like you collect the leachate, characterize it, you find out what are the materials which are there, how corrosive it is, how corrosive uh, it is and then you decide the liner material. Then you also have to look into the resistance of the liner material, how resistant are they to the chemicals because the uh, landfills means a huge amount or uh, a numerous uh, chemical substances are released into the leachate or it will be present in the waste. So, which, which can again puncture or uh, uh, create holes so that it uh, leads to the leakage, then uh, the uh, liner uh, system will not be efficient enough. So, the resistance of the uh, liner to leachate and to other chemical substances should also be taken into consideration before you choose a liner material. Natural clay, this is the first type of liner material which we will look into. Now, clay is nothing but any unconsolidated rock material and it is composed of clay minerals and they are generally formed by the break, they are the breakdown products or they are formed during the weathering of an existing rock. Now, what are the, uh, some examples of clay minerals will be Montmorillonite, Ilimnite and Kaolinite. These are some of the uh, clay minerals but they have extremely fine grain, grain size. Now, the grain size will always determine the porosity of the material. So, the finer grain size means the porosity will be extremely low and the permeability also will be very low. So, the clay liner consists of, now how do you, so 
How do you prepare a clay liner is that the clay liner will be prepared by mixing this clay minerals with fine silt particles which will be blended to form clay or clay soil so that it will have a low permeability. Now where do you get this clay material? Normally um, in our previous module I told you the availability of uh, the natural, the availability of material also should be considered as a criteria for site selection. So the clay material can be ex excavated or trenched out from the site where your landfill is to be constructed or it can also be brought from the nearby areas. So the clay material is excavated from the source site and it is blended to form a homogeneous material. Now blending will be done by mixing clay minerals and fine silt so that you get a, a clay soil or a clay. And I told you that the permeability of this material will be very low. Now the, the beauty of clay though its porosity is high, what will happen is like when you, uh, you would have absorbed you would have observed how a clay is. Normally if you see if it is dry and if, it, if there is no moisture, the clay materials will be uh, of fine grains, they will be very loose. So it will have a high porosity. The moment if you add water, when it starts absorbing water, the fine grains starts absorbing water and they start swelling. When they start swelling, what will happen is the grain materials, the air space between these grains will be removed off. The void space will be blocked and uh, the, interstitial, uh, spatial, the interstitial spaces will be removed. So as a result, the permeability will be decreased. That is the main significant reason why we are using clay as a liner material. It is always necessary. So if when you collect the material from uh, the landfill site or from the surrounding area, the material has to be sieved so that uh, the large rock particles should be removed off. Now why the rock particles should be removed is like when you have a rock material it will puncture or tear the polymer material where it will puncture or tear the polymers which has to be spread over this natural clay. So it is always necessary that you remove, you sieve the clay and you remove the large rock particles. The clay is then transported and spread by a bulldozer or a scrapper at the site. This is how natural clay is used as a liner material. Once it is spread on the landfill site using a bulldozer or a scrapper, what will happen is like now you have to compact the clay. Now the clay liner is then compacted by a large roller vehicles which will move over it and it will homogenize the layer by even if there is some uh, large particles of uh, clay, they will be broken and you will get a homogeneous mixture of the clay liner. The compaction done by moving a large ro roller vehicle over this clay liner will reduce the void space between the pieces of clay or the clay particles and, with, and, it, will, and it will also increase the density of the material. The compaction, it will increase the density and uh, it will uh, help or avoid the movement of leachate through that. Now the next type of liner material is bentonite enhanced soil. Now bentonite is nothing but it is a clay mineral, it is a mixture of clay minerals. Principally it is made up of Montmorillonite type. Again the bentonite will be of two forms, sodium and in the form of calcium. Normally sodium is used because they have lower permeability. Where the naturally occurring clay soil does not have a high, does not have high enough level of clay minerals to produce a suitably low permeability, bentonite clay is added to form bentonite enhanced soil. I told you how a clay liner is produced, right? So clay will be mixed with silt and a clay silt liner is made. Here again wherever the natural clay is not available in those places you can use a bentonite clay. Again you can mix it with the soil and a bentonite enhanced soil can be produced which can be used as a liner material. Again the property of bentonite type of clay minerals they have a very high swelling characteristics due, due to absorbing moisture. 
same like just like clay as I told you when there is moisture again uh, the particles will absorb moisture and they will start swelling. So, the same characteristics is all is also available for bentonite type of clay material uh, where it absorbs moisture and it shows a high swelling characteristic. Further, it is not only that uh, the moisture plays an important role in uh, leading to low permeability of bentonite uh, clay. The bentonite clay also swells during pressure, which means like if you uh, compact, if you layer out a bentonite uh, uh, clay soil layer and on top you keep loading the waste, the, the weight or the mass of overlaying waste will also create a pressure. It will put a pressure on this bentonite clay, when it puts a pressure obviously again it will start swelling. This is the beauty of a bentonite clay material. So, again it will lead to lower permeability. Sodium bentonite as I told you earlier that they have lower permeability, it is added in the range of 5 to 15 percent and it is blended uh, with the soil. This 5 to 15 percent will again depend upon the type of original soil which is to be used. The next type of liner is a geosynthetic clay liner. A geosynthetic clay liner, it is again a mixture of bentonite, bentonite clay mechanically or chemically adhere, adhered to a geotextile fabric. Geotextile is a polymer. Now, to this polymer, you uh, use an adhesive and stick a bentonite clay. Either this can be done mechanically or chemically. So, this combination is called as geosynthetic clay liner where a polymer geotextile fabric will be lined with a bentonite clay. Alternatively, the bentonite layer may be sandwiched between two layers of geo geotextile. On the first type, I told you it is bentonite clay which is adhered to a uh, polymer material. In the second type, a bentonite clay can, uh, a bentonite clay can be sandwiched between two layers of geotextile two layers of geotextile and in between you have a, uh, a bentonite clay layer. Again this can also be used as a liner material. Now how do you fuse the bentonite uh, uh, layer with the geotextile is you can use adhesives, you can use uh, needle punching method or some sort of stitching you can do so that a composite layer can be made. The typical geo geosynthetic clay liners uh, can be of approximately 1 centimeter thick. When this uh, geosynthetic clay liner is laid over this natural uh, liner, for example, any clay material or bentonite enhanced to soil, it can be uh, fused to the natural liner by using an, an adhesive namely bentonite cement. So, bentonite cement can add, act as an adhesive which can stick the natural as well as the uh, synthetic liner together. Now, geosynthetic clay liners are often used as an alternative to natural compacted clay liners. The next type of uh, material, landfill liner material is flexible membrane. Now, flexible membrane liners are synthetic polyplastic material with extremely low permeability. The high density polyethylene and PVCs are uh, the common type of uh, materials which are used in as flexible membrane. The thickness uh, will range from 0.75 mm to 3 mm. Now, what are the uh, properties which will determine the suitability of these liners will be density, tensile strength, puncture resistance, tear resistance, it should be resistant to UV and ozone and other chemical resistant. The tensile strength means if you keep pulling uh, the polymer, it should expand okay. to a certain uh, level, it should be flexible enough and puncture resistant means even there are some uh, rock materials which are there, if it is uh, trying to tear, it should not uh, tear or it should not be punctured by those uh, material. Then tear resistant and uh, since they are uh, having a lot of uh, chemicals in this uh, waste material, uh, the material, the flexible membrane should be resistant enough to these chemicals as well as UV uh, light and ozone. The membrane chemical resistance is very, very important because 
as I told you the waste material contains a lot of organic and inorganic acids, alkalis and other organic hydrocarbons. So, you have to be very very careful when you choose the type of uh, flexible membrane. Now, this table uh, summarizes the types of uh, synthetic flexible membrane li liners which are popularly used uh, as a line uh, in a line in a landfill liner system. So, if you see thermoplastic uh, polymers, thermoset polymers uh, are used both individually as well as in combination. So, under thermoplastic uh, polymers, PVCs, uh, uh, polyethylene that is low density polyethylene, high density uh, polyethylene, chlorinated uh, polyethylenes, uh, all these things can be used. Also, elasticized uh, poly, polyolefin, uh, ethylene interpolymer and polyamides are used and uh, uh, butyl isoprene, isobutylin, ethylene propylene, diene monomer, polychloroprene and polypropylene, ethylene polypropylene tetra polymer, ter polymer and ethylene vinyl acetate. These are used as part of thermoset polymers. In combinations if you see that is thermoplastic and thermoset polymers, you find PVC nitrile rubber, PVC ethyl vinyl acetate, cross linked CPE that is uh, chlorinated polyethylene, uh, chlorosulfonated polyethylene and uh, hypalon. It is also used for um, used as uh, synthetic flexible membrane liners. Next type of uh, liner material is geotextile. Now, geotextile is a fabric material that is used uh, as a protection for polymeric plastic membrane and it will also used as a filtration material to filter out the fine grain particles which are generated along uh, which is generated from the waste and they move along the leachate. So, that the drainage or the leachate collection system are not choked or blocked. Now, they are not used as a liner material. Instead, they act as a protection layer for the liner material, maybe the polymer plastic or uh, uh, any other uh, uh, natural clay liner, etc., even the bentonite clay. So, it can act as a protection layer for these material. Now, also it can be used as a filter material, which means the leachate collection system or the drainage system uh, which you have can be lined with geotextile. Now, when it is lined with geotextile, the smaller fine grain particles which are uh, uh, produced during the waste degradation, uh, it is obvious that, will be at, that it will be carried along with the leachate. Now, the leachate it has to enter into the leachate collection system. When it enters into the leachate collection system, the waste uh, materials, the bigger particles will tend to choke or block the leachate collection. So, it will uh, affect the efficiency of leachate collection system. So, what you have to do is you line one layer of geotextile over this leachate collection system, so that uh, it will prevent the entry of uh, the larger uh, particles into the leachate collection system. This will avoid the blocking of the uh, leachate collection system. And uh, what is what are these uh, geotextile made of? They are generally uh, composed of polypropylene or polyester fibers which are manufactured to form a fabric type material. And uh, they are not used for containment and they have relatively high permeability. I told you they are not used as a liner material, they are just used as a protection material for this liner material. Hence, uh, it, is, uh, it is not necessary that it should have a low permeability, they have high permeability. The next type of uh, liner material is geonet. Again, they are uh, porous sheets of plastic netting. They are again used as drainage layer to carry leachate or landfill gas. Now, again they are not used as a liner material nor a protection material. The purpose of geonet is to carry the leachate and landfill gas. The thickness of this uh, geonet will be in the range of 5 mm and it is composed or made of uh, polyethylene. Now, this uh, the use of this geonet is to prevent uh, from uh, uh, clogging due to particles in the leachate, same as that of geotextile geo fabric. So, sometimes what do they do is a uh, geonet is bonded to a geotextile fabric. If you look into the pore size, geonet will have a slightly higher pore size than geotextile. So, if you bond a geonet to
to a geotextile, what will happen? It will again further remove some sort of bigger materials which are there in the uh, leachate, bigger particles which are there in the leachate and the further removal can be done by the geotextile fabric. So, the main role of geonet is drainage and they are used as an alternative to naturally well drained materials that is uh, coarse gravel or uh, sand. And uh, the thickness required though they are uh, used to replace the well drained materials like coarse uh, gravel etcetera, they have lesser thickness when compared to gro uh, coarse gravel. So, that is more uh, effective than coarse gravel. Now, we look into the different liner system. As I told you earlier, liner system is not just one material which is spread on at the bottom or at the sides. It is a system which involves uh, different layers. One is your natural liner material, the other one is your synthetic liner material. It will have a leachate collection system and some sort of geotextile or geonet will be there. So, this all these put together will form a liner system. Now, within a liner system, it can be, uh, it is subclassified into four types. One is your single liner system, composite liner system, double liner system and multiple liner system. Now, the type of liner system as I uh, told you earlier, it is again selected based on certain criteria. The nature and composition of waste the cost which is involved because uh, more the layers more will be the cost. So, again that you have to keep in mind what is the cost availability and accordingly you can choose your liner system. Uh, and uh, we, we have to um, similar to liner material you also have to look into the geology and hydrogeology of the surrounding area. You should also check that the liner system does not allow the leachate to uh, percolate and enter into the groundwater. Also, the liner should ensure that the groundwater does not seep into the landfill, so that it will uh, generate more leachate. I hope you understand because the groundwater, if the water table increases during uh, rainfall, obviously the groundwater will enter. When the groundwater seeps into the landfill, it will create more leachate generation. So, you have to you, so you have to be more uh, clear, so that the groundwater, uh, the liner, the liner system should protect your uh, groundwater from entering into the landfill. Then prevent the escape of leachate and gas from the landfill. Also, it should be resistant to chemical reactions. Then it should have proper stability and good lifetime because once you uh, construct a uh, landfill it will go for a design period of 30 to 50 years. So, even uh, once you line the system and start loading the waste, it is difficult for you to again remove it if there is any problem, if they are not stable and if there is any leakage, it is difficult for us to remove and then um, uh, replace it. So, it, you while selecting or layering the liner system, you have to take a proper uh, care and attention to choose the uh, stable and uh, liner system which is of good lifetime. Now, single liner system it is uh, used for a low risk waste and they are used in places where chances of leachate um, production or percolation is uh, negligible. It comprises of uh, a primary barrier which is uh, which consists of a clay bentonite uh, which consists of a clay or a bentonite enhanced soil. Above and below this primary uh, barrier layer you would have a protection layer protection layer again I told you it is uh, geotextile which will filter out the suspended solids. Now, between the waste and the protection protection layer would be the leachate collection system which consists of a uh, drainage pipe. Now, through this drainage pipe the leachate which is collected will enter into. Sometimes I told you the leachate uh, collection system will be lined with a geonet again to protect the entry of suspended material into the collection system. Now, beneath the liner system, there can be a groundwater collection system which is, which is made up of gravel covered by a geonet. Now, this is an optional uh, uh, layer, uh, not necessary that every uh, liner system should have a groundwater collection system. So, it is not compulsory and it is optional. If you want, you can have a groundwater collection system. Now, this image uh, shows uh, you the single liner system 
where you can see the waste. Below the waste, you have a leachate collection system, and below that, you have a protection layer, and then you have a primary barrier. Then you have a one another protection layer before uh, that uh, groundwater collection system. Now, this protection layer. Uh, obviously, it, it can be, uh, it, it will be a geotextile lined with a geonet or a simple geotextile alone. The second type of liner system is a composite liner system. Here you have two different types of uh, liner materials are used. One is your clay based mineral layer and the other one is polymeric membrane layer. Now, this provides more secure containment of waste. Now, again the structure of this liner system uh, or the layering of this liner system will be, you will have a primary barrier which is made up of a synthetic uh, polymeric uh, flexible material with a separation layer made up of geotextile. The polymeric material uh, as mentioned earlier, it is made up of PVC, high density polyethylene, low density polyethylene, etcetera. Now, a secondary barrier also exists in this composite liner system, which is made up of clay or bentonite enhanced soil or a geosynthetic clay, okay, which is a combination which is a, um, a clay sandwiched between two geotextile fabric. They also can be used. Now, again between the waste and the protection layer, you can have a leachate collection system, which consists of a drainage pipe uh, lined with a geonet. Now, beneath this secondary barrier, Again, you can have a groundwater collection system, which consists of gravel covered or lined with a geonet. Again, this is an optional system. Now, this figure shows how a composite liner system uh, will uh, look like. You can see the waste. Below the waste, you have a leachate collection system lined with a geonet. And below this, uh, you have a, a, a primary barrier. And the primary barrier and the leachate collection system, it is separated by a separation or a protection layer that is a geotextile. And below the primary barrier, you have a secondary barrier. And be below the secondary barrier, you have a second protection layer, which is again a geotextile fabric. And the last one is a groundwater collection system, which is uh, optional. The third type is a double liner system. This liner system, again, it will have a primary barrier which is made up of a synthetic polymeric material lined with a separation layer made up of uh, geotextile. Then you have a secondary barrier which is made up of clay, bentonite enhanced soil or geosynthetic. And between the waste and the protection layer, you would uh, have a leachate collection system with uh, drainage pipes. And beneath the secondary barrier, there can be a groundwater collection system which consists of uh, gravel covered by geonet. Then you also have an intermediate high permeability drainage layer in between the primary and the secondary barrier. This is what is different in a double liner system. So, overall if you see uh, there will be a primary barrier, you will have a secondary barrier and uh, in between uh, the waste and the protection layer, you will have a leachate collection system. Also in between these two barriers, you will have an intermediate high permeability drainage layer. Okay? This will used, this intermediate high permeability drainage layer will be used for the collection of leachate and gas. The say, uh, a separation layer made up of geotextile fabric is also required between each barrier layer. This uh, figure will show you the double liner system. Here you can see below the waste, you have a leachate collection system which uh, may or may not be lined with a geonet and you have a primary barrier. In between the primary bar barrier, you have a, a separation or protection layer which can be made up of geo uh, textile and you have a uh, below the primary layer again you have uh, what I mean to say is the primary uh, layer is uh, lined on both sides with a protection layer which is a geo, geo textile and below this primary layer you have a drainage layer the intermediate drainage layer which I told you used for collection of leachate and gas. Now, below this drainage layer, again you have a secondary barrier lined up on both sides with a protection layer, which is a geotextile. And finally, the last layer, which is an optional layer, is the groundwater collection system, which will have drainage pipes with uh, lined with geonet, which is used for uh, collecting the groundwater. The next type of uh, liner system is a uh, multiple uh, liner system. It consists of few layers of double and a composite liner system. It is a combination of double and composite liner system. Here you have 
three barriers. If you discuss about the double liner system, in a double liner system you have two barriers with an intermediate uh, drainage system for uh, the collection of uh, leachate and uh, gas and in a composite liner system again you had two uh, barriers. Here you have three barriers which is primary, secondary and tertiary. Between these barriers sim, uh, in a same uh, way like double liner system you have an intermediate layer which is uh, used for gas collection and leachate collection and uh, even for maintenance purpose this intermediate uh, layer will be helpful. Now the primary barrier as usual it is made up of synthetic polymer and a secondary barrier will, will, be, will be made up of clay or bentonite enhanced soil. Now, in the double or the composite liner system, the primary and the secondary barrier are separated either by an intermediate drainage layer or by a separation layer made up of geotextile. Here the primary barrier and the secondary barrier are in intimate contact which means that the primary barrier and the secondary barrier are close. Now the intimate when you um, give such sort of arrangement where the primary uh, barrier is close to the secondary barrier, it will prevent the lateral movement of leachate and gas. Now all other layers are similar to uh, other liner system that is the double and the composite liner system. That this is how a multiple liner system uh, will be layered. Now we have completed with the first component of landfill, next is your waste emplacement. This will elaborate you uh, how your waste uh, is uh, uh, placed or uh, deposited or dumped in a landfill site. Now landfills are not homogeneous and they are usually made up of cells in which a specific or discrete volume of waste is uh, uh, dumped and these cells will be isolated from the adjacent waste cells by a suitable barrier. Now there are four methods which are there for uh, the waste loading or waste empl uh, which are followed which are followed for waste emplacement or waste loading. The first one is your trench method, area method, cell method and canyon or depression method. In a trench method what uh, do you do is uh, the, the site where the landfill has to be constructed will be excavated and once it is excavated the waste uh, it, for, it uh, forms a trench. Now uh, within the trench the waste will be deposited and the material which is excavated from the site is used as a covering layer. The next method is area method. In area method, wastes may be deposited in layers in, uh, in, uh, so that it form a terrace, terrace arrangement. For example, the entire landfill will be layered with waste at one stretch. Once the entire landfill is full, then the second layer will be placed. It is not in uh, portions or uh, parts. So this uh, gives a terrace, terrace sort of uh, arrangement. But the disadvantage of this method is it leads to excessive generation of leachate and it is very difficult to have a proper control over such area method. Because one layer you start loading and by the time you come back to the same place almost the degradation would have occurred and there you can find a lot of compression, the initial compression, primary compression, secondary compression everything will take place and the waste will uh, form a and, and the area will form a depression which will lead to more, uh, in, um, it will act as an impoundment for storing water. So it is very difficult uh, to uh, control uh, the area method of waste emplacement. It is difficult to control in the area method of waste emplacement. The third type of waste emplacement method is a cell method. This involves like you divide the landfill into imaginary cells of some dimension. Now everyday waste collection will be brought and it will be loaded or placed in that cell. Once one layer is over then the second cell will be used for uh, placing the waste. So one complete layering is done then again the lorries will bring the waste and then they will start loading the waste in the first cell. So a sequence is followed uh, for uh, the dumping or loading of waste into each cell. 
So, this method involves the deposition of waste within a pre-constructed bounded area. It is one of the most preferred method in industrialized world because it encourages the concept of progressive, progressive filling and also restoration. Now, operating a cellular method of filling will enable the waste to, to be deposited in a, a proper tidy manner that is in a sequence the waste can be uh, deposited and the cell method will also trap much of the litter because once you start loading in an area method if there is wind it will carry the uh, litter of loose materials from that. When you start depositing the waste by a cell method it will prevent or it will trap the wind blown litter. So, that is another advantage of the cell method. The last type or the fourth method is the canyon or depression method. In this method, the waste is placed against a lined canyon or a slide show or a slide slope. The slope stability and leachate gas emission control are the critical issues in this type of uh, waste placement. Now, once this is another important parameter you have to consider and you have to uh, do it, it is like every day the uh, waste which is brought from the collection area which is dumped, once the days uh, uh, the deposition of waste is over, you have to cover that layer with one layer of soil. Now, this will prevent the wind blown litter, it will also act as an inoculum for degradation. The microorganisms which is present in the soil will enter into the waste and it will help in proper degradation. If there is no soil cover, soil which is available, you can also use alternative materials like the green waste can be used, it can also uh, uh, green waste can green waste can be used, also some refuse materials can be used, uh, uh, refuse materials in the sense like construction and demolition waste or uh, some other uh, uh, textile uh, waste can be uh, used and uh, can be used as an alternative for the soil. The final or uh, the last component of uh, the landfill structure or the landfill um, the landfill structure is a cap or a landfill cover. Now, this is a final cover or capping material of the landfill. The purpose of having a landfill cover or cap is to protect the waste and to prevent the entry of rain or any other surface water into the waste. Also, it will help uh, in controlling the release of landfill gas and it will also prevent the ingress of ingress means inflow, ingress of air which would disturb the anaerobic degradation process which occurs within the uh, waste cells. Now, the final cover can be landscaped with soil so that you can have uh, vegetation or plant growth. Uh, again, the plant growth, uh, it should not be deep rooted plants, some um, superficial uh, rooted uh, plant, plants can be used, even grasses can be grown. This is just as a part of uh, beautification, uh, you can do this. Again. Um, the design of a cover will depend upon the type of waste material which is being loaded or deposited into the landfill. Now, the structure of the cover uh, material, if you uh, cover layer or the landfill cover, it will be like the overlaying, uh, the waste will be there. On top of the waste, you will have a gas collection layer and the gas collection layer will be a porous layer with, uh, with made up of geonet, geotextile or coarse sand so that it is easy for the gas to permeate through this layer and enter into the collection system. Now, above this gas collection uh, layer, you will have a barrier uh, layer made up of plastic, geomembrane or geosynthetic clay liner of uh, bentonite and textile or natural compacted layer, compacted clay. This layer, this barrier layer will again protect the ingress of air and water into the waste material. Now, above this layer that is the barrier layer, you will have a drainage layer which is used for collecting the water which comes uh, from uh, precipitation that is rainfall. 
Now, above this is the uh, protection layer which is used to protect the uh, cover material or the lining material which is uh, uh, line, uh, lining the uh, top layer of the waste from uh, burrowing animals and uh, man made intrusions and entry of root. On top is the restoration layer as I told you on top the fine uh, 5 uh, centimeter you have to layer it with uh, top soil. This is done for growing some uh, small uh, plants even grasses can be used the main purpose can be for beautification. So, overall if you see the cap layer waste will be there on top you have a gas collection layer then on top you have a barrier layer and then you have a dra drainage layer protection layer and on top you have a, a layer of topsoil which is called as a restoration layer. Now, this is the structure of a landfill cover where you have waste then you have a gas collection layer then you have a geomembrane or a barrier layer sorry barrier layer lined with a geomembrane then you have a drainage layer which is again lined with the geotextile then you have a protection layer and you have topsoil which is used for vegetation purpose. Now so far we have looked into the different components and uh, the uh, components like liner system. Um, uh, waste emplacement and cover we we also looked into the different materials which are used how the uh, the different materials are lined in a liner system how the waste is being placed into the landfill how you structure out or layer out a cover all these things we have seen now what exactly happens inside the waste inside the landfill after you dump or deposit the waste into the landfill what are the process which actually takes place inside the landfill is also important. Now, in this we will uh, in the uh, coming slides we will discuss about what are the different processes which are uh, taking place inside the landfill. First one is what we will see about the process which takes place inside a hazardous waste landfill. Now, hazardous waste as you all know it will have very um, minimum or almost negligible biodegradable waste. The material or the waste which comes inside an hazardous waste landfill uh, will be uh, the will be containing uh, either one or all of these uh, one more or all of these properties like corrosivity, ignitability, uh, toxicity and reactivity. So, such waste cannot undergo any biodegradation. So, then what are what will be the other process that takes place inside the uh, hazardous waste landfill. The hazardous waste which is present inside the landfill will uh, will be subjected to a, a range of process. It can be a biological process, it can be a physical process and it can be a chemical process. The process which includes will be uh, the redox reaction, complexation, ion exchange, adsorption, precipitation, neutralization etcetera. The migration of leachate through the hazardous waste mass in the landfill will disperse and dilute the pollutants. Also the leachate that is generated will be uh, adsorbed or absorbed onto the waste material. So, the adsorption or absorption process uh, where the leachate gets adsorbed or absorbed onto the uh, waste material will limit the chemical reactions that take place within the hazardous landfill. So, as I told you earlier inside an hazardous waste process majority of chemical reaction takes place like there will be complexation of uh, species, there will be precipitation you can find uh, salts getting precipitated and uh, uh, the cations and anions uh, like there will be an exchange ion exchange process takes place between the uh, where the anion, can, anion and cation gets exchanged. So, also you can find some oxidation reduction reactions within the landfill. So, overall within a landfill you if you see you can find a lot of chemical reactions takes place. If at all if there is any uh, biodegradable material which is there then biodegradation takes place. Physical process if you see it is just um, like uh, it is just alteration. Once during this chemical process or biological process what happens is the property of the waste material changes and the uh, it gets either compacted. So, that is a sort of physical process which takes place inside the hazardous landfill. Next. 
Now the process which takes place in a non-hazardous landfill where your municipal waste is loaded, here you can find a majority of uh, biodegradation takes place within this landfill. Municipal solid waste, it is a mixture, again you will have a lot of biodegradable material, also you will have other non-biodegradable materials like if it is not segregated then you will have plastics, uh, you will have glass, metals, etc. Now this biodegradable material will have a, uh, the, it will follow a biological conversion route. So in addition to the biological route, they will all, there will also be some uh, sort of physical and chemical reactions which takes place. Uh, similar to hazardous waste, physical reactions like after biodegradation, the, the volume of waste gets reduced, so there will be a compaction, depression and all those things. So simple alteration in the physical uh, property uh, of waste will be there. That is the physical process that takes place inside the uh, non-hazardous landfill. The, there are uh, various uh, stages which are involved uh, during the biodegradation of waste inside the um, municipal uh, inside the non-hazardous landfill or a sanitary landfill. The waste degradation inside uh, a municipal, uh, inside a non-hazardous landfill where municipal waste is uh, stored uh, undergoes degradation by these following steps. You all know the municipal solid waste or uh, the biodegradable fraction of the uh, municipal solid waste, uh, it uh, consists of both, uh, it consists of carbohydrate, proteins, fats, etc. So the waste organic fraction gets hydrolyzed. At stage 1, what happens is like hydrolysis or aerobic degradation takes place. Initially, the waste which is being deposited into the uh, landfill will have some amount of oxygen in them. This oxygen will be used by the microorganisms which are present in the municipal waste and this will lead to the uh, aerobic degradation. Hydrolysis as you all know it, it, it is based on the moisture content or uh, due to the water molecule which is present in the waste. So the first stage uh, of uh, degradation is hydrolysis or aerobic degradation where your aerobic microorganisms are involved which utilize the oxygen present in the void spaces uh, of these waste and once the oxygen in the void space is utilized then it will take the oxygen which is uh, present in the moisture that is in the water. Once the moisture level is uh, uh, the oxygen present in the water is also taken then it will uh, take it will take oxygen in the presence of the combined form maybe the phosphates, sulphates, nitrates etc. Once it is done the complete uh, absence of uh, aerobic condition will be there and the aerobic uh, uh, organisms will evade out and it will be replaced by the anaerobic uh, organisms. Now under anaerobic uh, condition you all know anaerobic process starts and uh, there are four stage uh, for it, uh, the anaerobic uh, degradation takes place in four stages. First it is uh, hydrolysis and fermentation, next is your acetogenesis and acido, next is your acidogenesis, then is your acetogenesis and then comes your methanogenesis. So at the end of anaerobic uh, degradation, it results in the uh, formation of methane and carbon dioxide. So if you see in anaerobic uh, degradation, Hydrolysis, the complex substances are broken down into simpler ones which results in the uh, generation of organic acids and other uh, uh, ammoniacal nitrogen is produced. Then followed by uh, next step your acidogenesis and acetogenesis uh, takes place where the waste is uh, converted or broken down into volatile fatty acids and uh, this volatile as uh, fatty acids uh, like uh, the acetic acid, butyric acid and propionic acid is further converted by the acetogenic bacteria into acetates. Now later the, ac uh, the acetates are uh, converted to uh, methane and uh, carbon dioxide by using the methanogens. Now methanogens is, um, uh, methanogens are the bacteria, group of bacteria which uh, involves uh, the, uh, which converts the uh, acids, sorry the acetates into methane and carbon dioxide and methanogenesis is the last phase of anaerobic degradation. So after aerobic degradation or hydrolysis then 
comes your anaerobic degradation where again you have four phases in that hydrolysis and fermentation followed by acid, acidogenesis and acetogenesis then comes your methanogenesis. Now the last phase in waste degradation inside a non-hazardous landfill is oxidation. Oxidation all the uh, after um, uh, anaerobic degradation once again the oxidation takes place where uh, it results in the production of carbon dioxide. Now, the first stage is hydrolysis. Now, hydrolysis see the waste which comes inside the landfill will be complex. It will contain carbohydrate, proteins and um, fats. So, the waste will be divided or segregated into two. One is your organic fraction, the other one is your inorganic fraction. In the organic fraction you can find uh, the carbohydrate which is cellulose and other material, then you have proteins and then you have uh, the fat or lipids. Now, these complex organic uh, compounds are broken down by micro aerobic microorganisms or it is hydrolyzed into simpler substances. Now, oxygen plays an important role in uh, hydro in stage 1 that is hydrolysis or aerobic degradation. This uh, step occurs during the initial uh, few uh, days, initial few days of uh, waste emplacement within the uh, waste landfill. Now, the microorganisms are aerobic and they require oxygen. What happens during this process is, uh, since you have uh, oxygen and aerobic organisms, they multiply, they grow, they have substrate also, they degrade and they increase the temperature up to 70, uh, 70 degree Celsius. The products which are produced during this uh, aerobic degradation or hydrolysis is mainly carbon dioxide and water. Now, once the temperature reaches up to 70 to 90, it will um, dry up or volatilize all uh, the water or moisture which is present in the waste. Also, since the carbon dioxide is produced during the stage 1, it will combine with water and form carbonic acid, thereby it will increase the acidity of the waste at this stage. So, at the end of uh, this uh, stage, the leachate which is generated from this uh, stage, it will be acidic. The efficiency of the aerobic stage will always depend upon the amount of oxygen which is there, the void spaces and it will also depend uh, uh, upon, uh, upon the degree of compaction and the air space which is locked into in, in the void spaces of the waste. The next stage that is stage 2 is hydrolysis and fermentation. Now, the stage 1 will end when there is uh, depletion of oxygen, when the oxygen is take completely taken up by the microorganisms. Now, once there is depletion of oxygen, then the aerobic microorganisms will die and it will be replaced by your anaerobic organisms and your anaerobic process will start. Uh, mostly if you see uh, the facultative uh, anaerobes facultative means which can tolerate uh, reduced oxygen level and will start growing up. So, the left out carbohydrate proteins and lip lipids which are not uh, hydrolyzed or uh, degraded in stage 1 will be hydrolyzed to sugars in this stage and it will be slowly decomposed to uh, hydrogen, ammonia and other organic acids. Now, the proteins will decompose to ammonia and carboxylic acid and carbon dioxide. So, since there is um, degradation of protein that too in anaerobic condition you can find a lot of ammonia generation during this phase. So, if you analyze the leachate at this particular stage the ammoniacal nitrogen will be very high. So, after hydrolysis where uh, the complex material is converted into simpler uh, simple sugars then they are further uh, degraded into organic acids like the volatile fatty acids as I told you earlier, uh, the butyric acid, acetic acid and propionic acid. These acids are produced and uh, the temperature in the landfill will start dropping. It will be in the range of 30 to 50 degrees Celsius at this stage and the gas concentration uh, at stage 2 will be around 80 percent of carbon dioxide and 20 percent of nitrogen. With this, the stage 3 starts. Now, stage 3 is acetogenesis, 
the organic acids that is the volatile fatty acids which are produced during stage 2 will be used uh, here in acetogenesis where it will be used by the acetogen microorganisms and converted to acetates that is acetic acid, acetic acid derivatives, carbon dioxide and hydrogen. To summarize this module, at the end of this module you would have understood what is a landfill, what are the different components of a landfill like the liner system, the, the waste emplacement cells, then the capping or the cover system. We would have discussed about, we have discussed in detail about the different liner system like the single liner system, the composite liner system, the double liner system and a multiple liner system. Then we also discussed about the waste emplacement method like the layer method, the cell method and the area method. Then we discussed about the capping system, how the waste once the landfill area is full, how it, what is the capping system that is being used for closing. We also discussed about the post closure monitoring of the landfill. Then we discussed about the various phases of waste degradation within the landfill like the initial aerobic phase then followed by your hydrolysis, acidogenesis, acetogenesis, methanogenesis and how the waste gets degraded and in each phase what is the nature of gas which is which is being generated. Then finally, we discussed about the various factors which are playing an important role or which is influencing the waste degradation like your pH, temperature etc. I hope this would have been use, I hope this would be of use to you. Thank you.